Hey friend, you're listening to episode 220 and today we're chatting about why we don't need as much time as we think we do. This episode is so powerful yet so simple and we blame so much of why we're not doing stuff on time and all of our failures quote unquote are because we don't have the time to do it and we want to do the things but we don't have the time and today's episode is going to show you that you actually do have the time but you do not prioritize well. You're probably trying to do everything that feels like it needs to get done. And then you feel like you've done nothing. You know what I'm saying? This episode is all about changing your mind and changing your mindset and prioritizing properly. I'm telling you, if you are a human on planet earth, which I feel like you are, then you're going to need to listen to today's show. Today's guest is Tanya Dalton. She's taken over the show. She's a productivity expert, writer, speaker, and founder of Inkwell Press Productivity Co., a company centered around productivity tools and training. She released her very first book, The Joy of Missing Out, with HarperCollins October 1st. Tanya's messages about business management, productivity, and the pursuit of passion have impacted thousands and inspired her to launch her podcast, Productivity Paradox, which has surpassed more than a million downloads. Her podcast regularly ranks in the top 50 of all business management podcasts on Apple Podcasts, and Tanya has been featured on Real Simple, Entrepreneur Inc., Apartment Therapy, Lauren Conrad, HGTV, among a bunch of other places. In 2019, Tanya received the Enterprising Women of the Year Award and was named North Carolina's Female Entrepreneur to Watch by The Ladders. So I wanted to have Tanya on because oftentimes with our health and wellness, we don't prioritize ourselves very well. And then we end up uh, through the new year wishing that we would have done things better. And then 2021 comes around and we repeat the cycle. Let's like stop that, right? Yeah, you with me on this? I feel like January is a perfect time to chat about this. And if you have questions about today's content, you can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me. You can catch up on previous podcast episodes and notes from today's show by going to ketodietpodcast.com. Just look for episode 220 on that page and it'll have all the links and resources that Tanya shared today. Okay, let's do this thing. Hey, I'm Leanne Vogel, and you're listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. I've put together a free 21-page guide on achieving weight loss on your keto diet if nothing is working. Did you know imbalanced hormones are generally at the core of all struggles that women face when it comes to our weight? Grab your free guide at ketoforwomen.com to get the steps you need to overcome the hurdles standing in your way. Thanks so much for listening, and let's get started with the show. Hello, hello. I'm Tanya Dalton. I'm the founder of Inkwell Press. I'm the host of Productivity Paradox podcast, and I'm the author of The Joy of Missing Out. And I am thrilled to be taking over the podcast today because I want to talk to you about your time and why we don't need as much time as we think we do. You see, we all seem to think that we need more time. Whenever I ask people why they haven't gone after their big goals or their dreams, why they're not pursuing their passion projects, the answer I hear over and over and over again is, I don't have the time. And what they don't realize is that they do have the time. They just need to prioritize. You see, we spend our days chasing down a thousand things, cramming our day full with tasks and errands and chores and projects, and the list goes on and on, doesn't it? We really need to rethink busy. We need to slow down so we can actually achieve more. So we can stop managing our time and start savoring the moments. We can live more by doing less. That's the entire premise behind the joy of missing out. We need to stop chasing busy. We need to find ways to really use our time on what matters most. You see, by trying to do everything, we end up feeling like we've accomplished nothing. Have you ever had those days where you're running around checking a thousand things off your to-do list? You're running here and there, checking things off. But then when you slip into bed at night, you think to yourself, why didn't I get more done? Why didn't I work harder? Why didn't I check more things off the list? Why didn't I do enough? And that's why we sometimes feel like we are not enough. We feel unsatisfied and unsuccessful, like we haven't done enough, even though we were busy all day long. This is why we cannot let busy become our default mode. 
Busy doesn't mean you're happy, and it certainly doesn't mean you're productive. I tell people that productivity is not about doing more, it's focusing on what matters most. Focusing your time so that the priorities in your life sit front and center and get the lion's share of your time. I get it, though. We think we are supposed to be busy, that that's just how life is. In fact, when we aren't busy, we worry that we are somehow failing. That hectic pace of life passing by us in a blur is just how it's supposed to be. But here's the biggest rule in life. There are no rules. You have to live by your own and stop worrying so much about what everybody else thinks. We have to stop saying yes just to please everybody else. We're so quick to put ourselves at the bottom of our people-pleasing list, aren't we? You see, it's not just about saying no. It's really about finding your yes. The yeses that belong to you and make you feel good. Choosing how we spend our time instead of filling it with being busy. I have a full finding your yes blueprint that we walk through together in the book because there's a huge difference between happily giving our time to others and making ourselves do things because we should. You see, the lines between have to and want to have become so blurred. It's sometimes really hard to figure out what it is we want to do, what our yeses are. So we go through a series of questions to help you choose to spend your time on what does feel good, what does drive you forward, and what does bring you happiness and joy. And don't worry, because I go through how to feel good about giving out that no when it's needed. That needs to feel good too. We have to feel okay with where we choose to spend our time. We can't give it all the time into everybody. We really need to focus our time where it really does matter, where it matters most. But we lose ourselves in this busy mentality. We use our to-do list to prove our worth. But we rarely stop to ask ourselves if these tasks are truly fulfilling. This is why we can feel so empty inside when someone asks us, what have you done today? Why we sometimes can't think of a single thing. We're so busy checking items off our list. We haven't stopped to think about whether they're truly driving us forward towards the life we really want. But how do you do this? How do you rethink busy? Because here's the truth. There's this glorification of busy in today's world. I mean, how many times have you asked someone, how are you? Only to hear them answer, busy. Not happy or joyful or excited or sad or any other emotion. Busy. We throw that word out because it feels like a badge of honor. But really, busy just means we're running ourselves ragged. And instead, we want to own our day. Not the other way around. But when you do spend your day running around putting out fires, you end up feeling exhausted and unsatisfied. It's often because the things on our list that we're so busy checking off aren't really the big things, the deep things that drive us forward towards our North Star, towards the life we truly want. Bob Goff says, I used to be afraid of failing at something that really mattered to me, but now I'm more afraid of succeeding at things that don't matter. I love this quote because what you do matters. How you choose to live, the actions you take, you matter. And by not prioritizing how you spend your time, you're saying that you don't. So my question for you to think about here is, are you spending your time being busy at a thousand meaningless things, or are you focusing your day on what matters most, on things that fulfill you? You see, we think of time as all being the same. An hour is 60 minutes, no matter how you slice it. And you're right, 60 minutes is 60 minutes. But let me ask you this, what does 60 minutes at the beach feel like? versus 60 minutes before a big presentation. Not the same, is it? We believe that time is this rigid straight line, like the timeline you made in the third grade. But time is fluid. It shifts and changes with how it feels and how we can maximize it. Not all time is created equal. And how we treat time isn't always equal either. In my book, The Joy of Missing Out, I say that time is like a bowl of ice cream. And I'll tell you what I mean here. If you head to your kitchen right now and you grab a small bowl and you fill it with ice cream, chances are you're going to enjoy every single bite. But what if while rummaging around in your cupboard, you find a bigger bowl and you fill this bigger bowl with ice cream? Will you eat just a few bites and put it away? 
Or will you eat until your spoon scrapes the bottom of the bowl, grabbing those last few melted bits? Yep, me too. No matter which bowl I choose, I will end up eating the amount of ice cream that fills it. My idea of how much ice cream I need expands to the size of the bowl that I have. And time works exactly the same way. It's called Parkinson's Law. And it's the concept that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So let's put this into regular English here. The law states that if we give ourselves a week to complete a two-hour task, that task will increase in complexity and it will fill that week. Now, while the two-hour task itself doesn't really need the extra time, it's actually the stress and the tension of having to get it done, that's what fills the space. So. If you give unimportant tasks a small container of time, they'll fill it. And if you give those same unimportant tasks a large container of time, they'll fill that too. So we have to limit the amount of time we're giving these unimportant items. And yes, I use the term giving here very intentionally. You are gifting time on tasks and activities as if your time were infinite and you can generously hand it away. We have to contain those tasks that are not truly important. We cannot let them dictate our day. Remember, we want to own our day. And the first step is taking charge, like you're the boss of your time. You know why? Because you are. Even if you don't think you are, you own your time. And as Simon Sinek says, if you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. Warren Buffett says the difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. They prioritize. Today's episode continues after this short message from one of my sponsors who make the show possible, plus give you some great deals on my favorite things. Finding a physical training program that pushes you to grow physically and mentally isn't that common. Most fitness apps focus on one or the other, but not both. The XPT app supports a lifestyle rooted in the most basic yet powerful human trait, the ability to adapt. With the comprehensive Breathe, Move, Recover curriculum, the app is designed to stimulate growth in all aspects of human performance. I've been incorporating the CO2 tolerance exercise before my daily morning meditation. I thought I was good at breath work, but this class is a challenge and I like challenges. When I first started the class, I resisted it a lot. I thought it was stupid, but wow, 10 minutes into my first class, I felt happier, lighter, calmer. It was crazy. I've done the CO2 tolerance class for 10 days consistently, and it's gotten so easy. I can do the whole class without gasping for air. My breathing throughout the day is way more balanced than it used to be, and I've found that I'm able to maintain more even breath through my vinyasa yoga classes, which is aces for me. XPT is offering access to this revolutionary training app for free. Go to xptlife.com slash Keto. That's xptlife.com slash keto to download the app for free and start seeing how easy it is for you to adapt and how powerful you realize you are when you do. You might remember the 80-20 rule, which is also known as Pareto's principle, and that applies to almost everything. That 20% of our efforts will account for 80% of our results. So instead of trying to do everything, Instead, let's focus in on the 20%. Let's prioritize that vital few because that's what's going to have your biggest impact. So you don't have to do all the things to reap the benefits. It's the vital few that makes the biggest impact, that 20%. But if we spread our time over everything, we aren't able to really give the priority items on our list the amount of time that they really deserve. We're stretching it out. We're spreading it over all the tasks instead of the vital few, instead of the 20%. So we stretch ourselves thin. And we have to stop treating all tasks as being equal because they're not all the same. When we treat everything as a priority, nothing is. So we need to figure out what your top priorities are and then focus in on those and decide what's needed to reach that goal. You have to let go of the other projects that are potential distractions to your success. 
And I know that might feel a little bit uncomfortable, like you're, you're, you're quitting. And we know that winners never quit and quitters never win. And that's not really true at all. We get wrapped up in this idea because we worry about what other people will think, like what they will say when we say no or when we prioritize. We have to learn to deal with what's in front of you and what is truly up to you. Think about the things that you can control, your emotions, your judgments, your creativity, your attitude, your perspective, your decisions, your determination. Focus on those things and choose to spend your time in ways that have meaning to you. You see, we need to intentionally make the time. That time is never just going to appear out of nowhere. We have to carve it out. We have to make it for ourselves. You just have to know what is important to you. What are the things that you really want to focus your time on? So if you're setting a goal, then that means it should be important to you. After all, that's why you're making it a goal, right? So I have five ways for you to intentionally Make time for your goals because I think that's really what most people want when they're telling me that they don't have time for the projects or the tasks or the things that they're truly passionate about. Generally, these are their goals. These are the things they really want out of life, the things that they don't think they have time for. So I want to talk about how we can do that for ourselves because having time, that's not the issue here. It's how we're spending our time. That's the problem. Have you ever seen the meme that says, We have the same 24 hours as Beyonce. Yeah, I love that meme. You know why I love it? Because it's a snarky little meme that's absolutely correct. We do. We have the exact same amount of time. She doesn't get some magical bonus hour. She doesn't magically get more time. We have exactly the same amount of time. But I can already hear you. I know what you're going to say here. Yeah, but she has a team. We justify it with that. Well, I could too if I had a nanny and a chauffeur and a makeup team and, oh, well, you, you know, you get the idea. Yes, you're right. She has a team. But so do you. And that's tip number one. Lean on your team. And yes, maybe unlike Beyonce, we don't have a nanny or a makeup team. That would be really nice if we did. But we do have a team. You have friends, maybe family members or coworkers, people who love and support you, people we can delegate and share tasks with. I want you to start thinking outside of the box, too, about how you can rely on your team, your team that you work with, and your team at home. That's what I want you to remember. We don't just have teams that we work with in our office spaces or in our places of business. We also have a team at home, whether that's, you know, your roommate or the person you live with, or your family, we are a team for each other outside of work. We're there to support each other. Now, some people might say a support system is, you know, just a group of cheerleaders. But really, it should be so much more than just people who are cheering you on and encouraging you from the sidelines. Sometimes these are the people who will roll up their sleeves and get into the trenches right next to you. Sometimes it's the people who will hold you up when you don't think you can stand any longer. Sometimes it's the people who will sit and listen and not even give their opinion or advice on the matter. They're just there as a sounding board. And sometimes it's the exact opposite of that. It's the people you go to when you do want the strong advice or the strong opinions, and you don't want them to just sit there and listen because you want them to challenge you. You know, here's the truth. We feel bad leaning on others. We feel like we're a burden. But allowing others to lift you up is a gift you can give. It's true. Think about it. Think about how it feels when you have a friend who needs help and you help lift them up. You give them a little bit of attention. You give them a kind word. You give them advice. Whatever it is, you do this for your friend and that really helps you feel good, doesn't it? Well, how do your friends feel when they are able to do that for you? When we reframe what that looks like leaning on other people, when we stop looking at it as being a burden and instead choose to see it as a gift we can give, that's really when it becomes a meaningful team effort because we need each other. So feel good leaning on your team. Sometimes they're going to lean on you. Sometimes you're going to be the one doing the leaning. But all of that is good because too, it deepens up your relationships. I hope you're really enjoying today's episode. I'd love to see where you're listening from. Snap a pic and tag me at Healthful Pursuit or leave a review for the show on your favorite podcast player. 
It helps me out tremendously. Okay, back to the good stuff. Okay, tip number two. See yourself as a priority. You see, here's the other thing that Beyonce does. She looks at what she's doing as a priority. She's actively working to spend time on the things that she wants to do. When we look at our priorities, we often see that we're not spending enough time doing those things, those things that we really want to do. And we need to start treating our priorities as priorities. They should be what we focus in on our day. That excuse of life is too busy or I have too much to do is just that. It's an excuse. And I found that the problem behind this excuse is that we're not only talking about our own tasks and projects and priorities, we're also talking about everyone else's. This is when we have to take a step back and to realize the commitments that we get wrapped up in that aren't truly where we want to be. Remember that finding your yes blueprint I mentioned earlier in the episode? That's when this comes into play. We often take things that are important to other people and we bump them to the top of our own list. Even in front of our own priorities, we'll take our tasks from our spouse, our boss, our friends and family, and we bump them on top of our own. We bump them up on our list, we put them first, and we put our own dead last. And I know I'm not the only person who's done this. It's so easy to do. However, when we do this, we're saying no to ourselves, to time for our goals, and we're saying yes to taking on other people's priorities instead of our own. It's really important to see yourself as a priority, as hard as that may be sometimes. But every time you say yes, you're saying no to something else. Yes to other people's priorities means no to your own. Yes to other people's passion projects means saying no to your own goals. So the next time you take the invitation to sign up for another committee that you don't really feel passionate about, or you pick up an extra project that someone else has procrastinated on, I want you to realize you're saying no to yourself again. And what we want to do is we want to start saying yes to you. Every single time you say yes, there's a no hidden somewhere in there. So before you're tempted to say yes to make other people happy, I want you to first figure out, where's that no hidden? Is this going to really take away time from the things I truly want to do? The third tip is find the small pockets of time and claim them. We all have these tiny little pockets within our day where we have 10 minutes here, 5 minutes here, 20 minutes here, 2 or 3 minutes there. Maybe it's because you've gotten to the meeting a little bit early. That's a little pocket of time. Maybe you finish a project with a few minutes to spare. That's another pocket of time. Maybe you finish the dinner 10 minutes earlier than anticipated. That's a pocket of time. These little tiny pockets are undervalued. We think they're too small to make any real gains. But these little scraps, they add up. We don't realize it, but just like pennies in a jar that add up to dollars, our time can start to add up. Tiny bit by tiny bit by teeny tiny bit. My favorite example of this is Stephen King. Now, Stephen King, of course, we all know, is a huge best-selling author who has sold over 350 million copies of his books. And he attributes much of his success to the time he spent reading. Now, here's Stephen King, this wildly successful author, and he spends five hours a day reading. Five hours. So you might think to yourself, how in the world can he find five hours every day? That's 35 hours a week just spent reading. That's almost a full-time job. He gets through around 70 to 80 books every year. Now, obviously, Stephen King is a very busy man. He doesn't just sit and read five hours straight every day. He carries a book with him, and he grabs a few pages anytime he has a free moment, whether it's waiting for the coffee to brew or standing in line to buy a movie ticket. These are the tiny pockets of time that often go to scrolling on our phone because it's our default mode. So let's rethink these pockets of time. Let's choose instead to make that time count. You have five minutes, use that five minutes to look something up that moves you closer to your goal. You have 10 minutes, send out that email so you can network with that person that really will help you get to that passion project you want to work on. 
or whatever it is, use these tiny little pockets of time to make little steps to get you closer to those goals because that's how goals are accomplished. Tiny step by tiny step followed by tiny step. And then every now and then a big step. But we have this thing in our minds that we think to get to our goals, it has to be these giant leaps one after the next. When really, it's just these small movements each and every day, getting us closer and closer, little bit by little bit. Today's episode continues after this short message from one of my sponsors who make the show possible, plus give you some great deals on my favorite things. Soup. So I'm new to this whole loving soup thing. Like for real, I hated it until last year when I discovered how easy it is to boost your overall nutrient intake using soup. Like for real, a properly made soup is packed with the nutrients you need to balance electrolytes, support digestion, and keep full for hours and hours and hours. Kettle and Fire has a delicious line of bone broth based soup to make your keto life just a touch more easier with the perfect keto macros and a flavor that that's dairy-free too. Four flavors to choose from. They got broccoli cheddar, butter curry, mushroom bisque, and spicy cauliflower. And they're made with bone broth, so this soup not only keeps you full, but also provides high amounts of glycine, which helps to balance hormones, produce enzymes, and strengthen hair, skin, and nails. You can go to kettleandfire.com slash keto podcast and receive an instant 15% off six cartons or more, plus free shipping. Again, that's kettleandfire.com slash keto podcast. Enjoy. And speaking of how we use our time, that brings me to tip number four. Give yourself containers of time. When you're sitting down and planning what you want to do each day, I want you to designate 30 or more minutes of uninterrupted time to solely focus on your goal and one or two of the steps that you can work on during that 30 minutes. So again, 30 minutes feels a little bit like a small pocket of time, right? It feels manageable to give our goal 30 minutes out of our day. But I want you to block that into your schedule. So choose a time that you have good energy, a time that you can really give all of your thought towards your goal. And I want you to treat it like an appointment. I want you to realize that because it's your goal and your time, that doesn't mean it's any less important than a work meeting or a doctor's appointment. I want you to make this an appointment with yourself because you are important. So I know what you might be thinking right now. Well, that sounds really nice, but how am I going to find this 30 minutes? Well, let's cut out some time wasters. Drop that 45-minute episode of TV or the 30 minutes of browsing through social media. These are the little pockets we talked about. These little time wasters live there in those pockets, and it adds up fast. So when we take that time and instead choose to focus it in on something that's truly important to us, that's when we're going to start making some movements. And the beauty of this container is that it's focused. Because what I want you to do is I want you to give yourself 30 minutes to work on your goal and then schedule in a 15-minute fun break right afterwards. That's your reward for actually working on your goal. When we give ourselves this reward for doing the work, it reinforces in our brain that we want to do it again. And it will encourage us to make this into something we do on a regular basis. That sounds an awful lot like a habit, doesn't it? Which actually gets us to tip number five. Use habits to your advantage. You've heard me say this several times throughout the podcast. Every step counts. The big ones, the giant ones, the tiny ones, the medium-sized ones, each and every one of those counts. And what's nice is that when these steps are small, it's so much easier to make time for them to pop them into your existing schedule, to complete and feel some satisfaction on how you're progressing. And that's a big thing here, that feeling of satisfaction you get when you do make some sort of movement closer to your goal. It's incredibly real and incredibly motivating. I find for me that even when I have small wins, that builds up the momentum and that gets me more fired up, which then leads to bigger steps forward. Now, a simple way to make this happen is to consider establishing a habit that's related to your goal. What I love about good, healthy habits is it takes the thinking out of it. It almost allows our brains to go into autopilot mode where we don't have to worry about whether we're gonna do something. We don't have to worry about creating the time and the space for the action. It just happens automatically. Listen, we already have habits throughout our day. It's actually been estimated that 40 to 45% of our daily actions 
our habits. Think about it. You don't question whether you're going to brush your teeth or not. You don't think about how you have to put on your clothes in the morning. You just do it automatically. These have become habits. And so if we create habits that are focused on things that will drive us closer to our goals, we can make that happen automatically without having to think about it. And that will allow us to free up some brain space so we can spend our brain power on things that are really bigger. Habits are an easy way to make sure you make progress towards your goals on a regular basis. And let me tell you what I mean. If your goal is to keep a more organized home, you can establish a habit to make your bed every morning. See, I told you, small, small but mighty. The benefit of small movements, they're more likely to happen. How long does it really take to make your bed? Maybe 90 seconds? Totally doable, right? But what happens when you make the bed? Well, every time you walk into your bedroom and you see your bed, you get a little satisfaction, a little momentum, because once you start making the bed, maybe you follow that up with another habit. Perhaps picking up your clothes that you took off the night before. You know, the ones that are piled on the floor, right? These habits can build one upon the next. You can see these habits create small wins that begin to grow. Yes, getting your house organized feels like a huge task. But if you start by focusing only on one room, in this case, your bedroom, that's more manageable. And then if we focus on what we can do to make that even easier through our habits, even easier still. And once these habits become established, they run smoother and faster, requiring little to no time at all. So let's look at some of the goals that you might have. Like let's say a weight goal. A daily habit could be to pack a healthy lunch right after dinner the night before. Or what about a home project goal? Maybe you make a habit to spend 10 minutes during your lunch hour figuring out what part of the project you want to work on that night, thereby eliminating you standing in the middle of the project wondering what you should work on next, right? Or what about a goal of getting the promotion? Maybe you create a habit of taking 20 minutes during your mid-afternoon snack three times a week to reach out and network with other people in your company. You can see these little habits are really simple to do, really easy to make happen, and yet they can make the momentum you need to get that goal accomplished, to achieve the things you really want to do. You see, we don't need to make more time. In fact, we can't make more time, can we? But what we can do is we can intentionally make this space for ourselves. If we don't, our time ends up filled with things. Things, not goals, not dreams, not the ideal life we really want. And I know this might feel like, I don't know, what's the next step? But I got you covered. I have a download to help with all of this. It's a goal setting and achieving blueprint that will help you figure out what you want to focus in on and then create the space to make that happen. Anytime that I do a teaching, anytime that I'm doing a podcast episode or a course or a free training, I always like to leave you with a real actionable next step. So I'd love for you to grab that free download, that goal setting and achieving blueprint. Just go to tanyadalton.com slash keto. So that's Tanya with an O and a Y. tanyadalton.com slash keto and grab that freebie because I want you to feel like you have the time that you need. And what I want you to keep in mind is this. You own your time and you choose how you spend your day. You can allow others to run it for you by allowing their priorities and their urgent fires to take over or you can take charge. I use the word mindful a lot, not just in business, but also at home. It's a word that I use almost daily. And I love the word mindful because at its heart, it's about paying attention to yourself, to others, and to the legacy you're creating. I've often said that productivity is 90% mindset, but I think most of life is mindset. It's about the choices you make, how you choose to spend your time, how you choose to live your life, and how to choose to treat your priorities. After all, if they're priorities, shouldn't they be treated that way? So I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to make some choices. Choose to rethink what it means to be busy and choose to live a life you'll love. Make the choices that do allow you to achieve these goals and dreams you really want. Lao Tzu, the ancient Chinese writer and philosopher and founder of Taoism, said, Doing nothing is better than being busy doing nothing. So I want to encourage you to spend your time doing what matters most to you. And if that's your big goals or your dreams, then make it happen, my friends, because you, you are worth it. 
Gift yourself the time. Treat yourself like a priority. And truly, you'll have all the time that you need. Now, I've really enjoyed my time with you here on the podcast. I've really enjoyed this takeover and chatting with you about why you don't need as much time as you think. And I'm hoping that by listening to me, maybe you've shifted your mindset a little bit and you've realized you have all the time you need. Now, I would love to connect with you. So you can find me at tanyadalton.com. Again, Tanya with an O and a Y. Or you can even grab my book, The Joy of Missing Out. I dive so much deeper into all the things we talk about here in the podcast episode and more. You can find that at joyofmissingout.com. And don't forget to grab that freebie. You can find that at tanyadalton.com slash keto. That's that goal setting and achieving blueprint that I really think will help you get closer to your goals. Thank you again for letting me take over this podcast episode. It has been so much fun to share with you a little bit about that joy of missing out that I like to talk about. All right, until next time, have a beautiful and productive week. What did you think? Tanya's pretty cool, right? I'm so, so glad that she got to share her brilliance with you. Next up on the Keto Diet Podcast, Wednesday, January 8th, episode 221, Sarah Spears is taking over the show to chat about how to manage cravings, urges, obsessive compulsive habits. You're going to want to listen to this. Sunday, January 12th, episode 222, I'm going to be answering all your questions. I have no idea what questions yet, so stay tuned. It's a mystery to both of us. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor should it be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.